Now, when you think of some of the top edge rushers in the NFL, some of the names that may come to mind are Steelers, TJ Watt, Browns, Miles Garrett, Raiders, Max Crosby. And there's a long list of guys that you could consider. But would Adafi Away cross your mind if you were thinking about some of the top edge rushers in the league? Most people's answer would be no. That's why it was extremely surprising to hear this from somebody who at one point was one of the top edge rushers and has been extremely consistent throughout his NFL career, that being Saints defensive in Cam Jordan. Let's hear what he had to say on Mina Kimes podcast. Then it'd be Max. Um, then you, you know, you'd probably go over to the AFC um, and go for, I'm always going to forget his name, um, the edge rusher from Baltimore. Um Uda Udoazi. Udafe Owe. Yeah, there we go. Sure. Really? That's a, that's so a you're high. One. That's interesting. Yeah. Because that's then, a. He doesn't get talked about that much. Yeah. Now, I did see some Ravens fans think he was talking about Matt Abike, but he wasn't because he said edge rushers, not interior defensive linemen. So let my guy Adafe Owe get his shine. Even though, if you listen back to the clip, he made up some name. He said, like, Uda Duda Wasey. And I'm like, what are you talking about? But they got it cleared up that he was referencing Adafe Owe. Now, look. Got to be straight up. When it comes to top edge rushers, Adafi Away is not going to come to mind for me, even being a Ravens fan. And I don't think he will come to mind for most Ravens fans. That's not a shot at Adafi Away at all. So I don't want him or anybody else to think that it is. But with Adafi Away, we know there's crazy potential. And that's what the Baltimore Ravens drafted him for a couple of years ago in the first round on potential. He was not a crazy pro producer at Penn State, but they saw, they saw that 40 time. They saw his size. And like Justin Houston used to say, like this dude is like somebody created off of Madden. So with Adafi away, we've seen the improvement here and there. We, we see what he can do, but it just gotta, he gotta build up that level of consistency. So hopefully this is the year, because the Baltimore Ravens, they banking on him. They banking on him. Not in no crazy way or anything like that, but they did pick up that fifth year option. They could have turned it down and been like, you know what, Adafi away, this is it. And after this, we're going to be done. But the Baltimore Ravens said, nope, a dark fairway. We see something in you. We know it's there, but it's up to us to get it out of you. Because like we said yesterday, when we talk about Rashad Bateman, I'm tired of using this word. When we talk about David Ajabo, I'm tired of using this word. With a dafe away, in my opinion, it's the same thing. I'm tired of using this word called potential. I'm tired of using it. But with Adafi Away, it's a bit different because just like Rashad Bateman, Adafi Away has been around for a while. He's been around for a while. And while he has missed time here and there, he has played a lot more uh, in his tenure as a Baltimore Raven thus far. So we're just hoping that this can officially be the year where Adafi Away turns the corner and makes Cam Jordan look like a genius. Team Keep It Clean, make sure you check us out on Spotify. The link to that is down below in the description. And now we are getting to my favorite part of these videos where your questions are featured and we answer them just like this. If you would like to be a part of that, you can send your email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons like my guy Derek. I appreciate you being a patron. Shout out to all of y'all. You can send it directly on Patreon. So next question, like I said, it came from my guy Derek K. He said, Angraven, Graven, two things I wanted to point out. And my brother, can I get your opinion on them both? Uh-oh, here we go. Oh, good timing. He said, number one, pass rush. Pass rush? Oh, yeah, pass rush, LOL. I think the Ravens should go after Hassan Reddick. He is the missing piece to our front seven. I know a few fans will say he's cutting into a job or in a ways time. Crazy timing with this question, right? And that clip from uh, with Cam Jordan. Anyway, uh, he said, I know fans will say uh, he's cutting into a job or in a Dafi away's time. But uh, Mr. State Farm right around the corner, you need a proven pass rusher to rattle my homes. A job inability to stay on the field consistently and away's just rawness as an outside linebacker. Yet he has been improving. Still not enough against the very best in the game. You know, it's, it's so crazy. We always talk about how timing is everything. Literally everything that we were just talking about. With Adolfo away, he brought it up right there. So we, we got kind of the same vision, and I'm sure most Ravens fans do when it comes to Adolfo away. Again, not a bad play at all. David Ajabo, not a bad play at all. But with Ajabo, obviously, it's been injuries that have been holding him back. With Adolfo away, I think that's a good point because he used the word raw. He's very raw. So that is... That is spot on. So he is still learning a lot about the game. He obviously got plenty of knowledge about the game, and he's been getting better and better. But we just really want to see this be the year where he really turns that corner. But anyway, um, I would not be mad 
at the Baltimore Ravens getting a Hassan Reddick. I, I, I would not be opposed to that. Now, again, you got to pay him. Are you going to pay him? You're going to give him money? Because, again, that was the issue with the Jets. He wanted to be traded because the Philadelphia Eagles, they didn't want to pay him. He wanted to get paid, so he asked to be traded. He got traded, but he didn't get paid. So now he's in the same predicament. Requested, he, did, he requested another trade. So now he wants to get traded again. Um, I just, the way, what I would rather the Baltimore Ravens do, like how they, you know how they like loading up on defense, right? Like they, they will, they've got some crazy depth on defense. They be going wild with it. I would like to see that be poured into the offense. I, I would love that. The way that they aggressive on defense and what I would love to see them turn up and pour that into the offense. So that would be something right there. So uh, again, Hassan Reddick would be cool. I would not be opposed to that, but I would love that that mind frame for the Baltimore Ravens, that mo to switch over to the other side of the football. But anyway, continuing, he's also said number two, Kyle Hamilton. What's up with Kyle Hamilton? What you about to say about my guy Super Duper Kyle? He said, I keep hearing all the comparisons to will he be great like Ed Reed? All right, look, Kyle Hamilton. He's an amazing safety, the best in not only the AFC North, not the AFC. He's the best, not even the best in the NFL. He's the best safety in the world right now. Best safety in the world. His style is completely different from Ed Reed. His impact is there for sure. He, he got this big, huge impact on the Ravens, but his style is completely different from Ed Reed. But anyway, continuing. He said, um, I keep hearing all the comparisons to will he be great like Ed Reed. I beg to differ in a good way. Check it out. No one has the ball awareness and ball hawkness of Ed Reed. That's one in a million. Instead, Kyle Hamilton reminds me of another great safety, one that the Ravens fans are oh so familiar with. He was literally our tormentor from 2003 to 2014. Crossing enemy lines with this one, he reminds me of Troy Palomalu. Always in the box at the time, constantly moving around. He's back deep in the secondary, then he comes closer to the line of scrimmage. Is he blitzing? Is he following the receiver? Is he dropping back in coverage? I think Kyle will make a few Palomalo plays, like jumping over the line of scrimmage to the QB, right at the snap of the ball, like Troy Palomalo used to do. Like Booker T says in Graven, can you dig it? You ain't put the sucker on the end, though. You just said, can you dig it? See, he says, can you dig it, sucker? Anyway, he said, thank you for taking the time to look at my question. Hope the family is well. Yeah, they're they doing great. I appreciate you, Derek. Yeah, that's, I think that's a much better comparison for Kyle Hamilton because, yeah, he moves around. Like, Ed Reed, he will blitz sometimes. You know, he would get that occasional blitz. My favorite Ed Reed blitz of all time was the one against, uh, we were playing the, the Redskins on Monday Night Football, I think it was. That's when they had Lavernius Coles. I think they had Santana Moss still at the time. I think they had Chris Cooley. Did they have Clinton Portis or was he already traded to the Broncos? I don't remember. But anyway, they had Mark Brunel. And Mark Brunel, left-handed quarterback, used to play for the Redskins, used to play for the Jaguars. Well, Redskins at the time, now they're the commanders, of course. But um, with Mark Brunel, uh, Ed Reed had blitzed. He blitzed Mark Brunel from Mark's blind side. He blitzed him. Knock the ball out, ball falls on the ground, Ed Reed picks it up, scoop and score, beautiful thing. So shout out to Ed Reed, man. He is just, he was amazing. I always say, man, like, you could look at Ed Reed highlights and you could get amazed from them. They could be, you could be like, wow, that's Ed Reed. Wow, he was amazing. What a player. But you just had to be able to watch it live. Like, highlights, they do it justice now for sure. But actually watching a game, and I don't even just mean in person. I just mean just watching a Ravens game, watching a full game where Ed Reed was playing to just watch how great he was, man. But you know what was crazy is that, and I'm not comparing the two, but right now <laughs> we can say that same thing about Kyle Hamilton. You can look at highlights, and highlights, they'll do him justice now. But if you just watch Kyle Hamilton in a game, live and watch his impact it's crazy it's crazy something that the baltimore ravens struggled with for years recent years too up until kyle hamilton became super duper kyle screens defending the screens oh my goodness we would give up so many big plays when it came to screens but guess what whenever 14 is on the same side of a screen nope that man is an eraser that's something that we don't talk about enough but kyle hamilton we know he can do literally everything but yes Comparing him to Troy Palomalu, that is more his style. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I do agree. He is a lot like Troy Palomalu, but he ain't going to be the next Aerie. He ain't going to be the next Troy Palomalu. He's going to be the first super-duper Kyle in the NFL.
Now that was a real fun question. Shout out to my guy Derek for getting us started. Now the next question came from my guy Mark J G, and oh, it looked like we're gonna have to get a little more serious because he said tough decisions. He said, "What's up, Engraven? Hope you guys are doing well." With training camp and the preseason coming to a close, if you could pick one, two, three bubble guys to make the roster. Who would they be? Here's my rundown on some of those tough, tough decisions. Okay. Three bubble guys to make the roster. Um, I would say Dayton Wade. I would say Bo Braid. And I would also say Emory Jones as the third quarterback. Those would be my three. Let's see what he picked. He said wide receivers. I feel like the competition is Dayton Wade versus Malik Cunningham versus Anthony Miller for the last slot. Unless the Ravens end up keeping seven, which they could. Personally... I'm picking Dayton. He's been one of the most, if not the most productive back end wide receiver, not named Tylen Wallace. I know they paid Deontay, but your best ability is availability. And I'm not holding his family matter against him by no means. You go take care of that. Everyone understands. Outside of that, he's been quiet. I like to see him uh, at least play wide receiver a bit. You hear more from the first three men I mentioned. Uh, I'm lumping Russell Gage in the Deontay Hardy boat as well. All right, so with that. Yeah, he did have the, the family matter earlier in camp. But then um, he got that taken care of, which is great. Uh, I'm not sure what the full details of it were, but he had um, that, that had been taken care of. But then I know he got an injury, uh, so that made him miss some time uh, afterwards. But he came back, and he was out there at receiver a little bit um, this last preseason game, but he was out there as a return man in this last preseason game, and he looked comfortable doing it. I mean, he is has been a return man for the Saints and I think he did a little bit for the Bills too so that has been his role and that's what's expected to be his role uh and even I know you said you wanted to see him play some wide receiver think about this when the regular season starts they're not going to have him playing wide receiver they're not going to have him out there like that maybe like may if maybe one or two snaps a game if that but probably not they're not going to have him at wide receiver he's just going to strictly be a return man um so Wanting to see him at a wide receiver, I get it, but I don't think that would have any bearing on whether he makes the roster or not. Um, you also talked about Dayton Wade. Again, I, I agree. Malik Cunningham, that's a, a name that I have for, been forgetting when it comes to the Baltimore Ravens wide receivers. Honestly, he's looked good as a wide receiver. He, he's looked just fine. The transition has been smooth, in my opinion. We, we've seen him out there in the preseason. We see that number 12. We see him catch the ball. He got soft hands. He, he, he can run some routes. He got good speed. Like, and he, he good to turn up field. So, like, he, he got something, man. Not saying that he's going to go out there and be Randy Moss if he played for the Ravens to be a receiver or whatnot, but they got something there. So, he could be, like, a, a sneaky guy for the Baltimore Ravens. And, obviously, since he played quarterback, too, you got somebody that could throw that ball as well. But um, that's the first one. So let's move to cornerbacks. He said, I don't know. I think this is tough because Pepe and Jalen Armand Davis have been doing their thing. And Arthur Millette makes this tricky because you could keep both Pepe and Jalen Armand Davis. Or you could use Ardarius to fill in for Marlette and choose Pepe or Jalen Armand Davis. Also, it depends how you see Ardarius. What role will be? Uh, what role will he play? Or is he a safety or a nickel cornerback? I see why the Ravens love his versatility. Thinking about it more, I'd roll with all three and put Arthur on injury reserve. If I can do that, you can. Um, push the decision later down the road and have the full arsenal. Exactly. I agree. I agree. I've been saying the same exact thing, too. Um, because of Arthur Millette's injury, it opens things up at the cornerback position. So you were spot on, in my opinion. Because, yeah, you're right. Jalen Armand Davis has been doing his thing. Um, Pepe Williams, he's been doing this thing this preseason Because we've been hearing stuff about them we heard stuff about them in training camp Like in practices and stuff But that's one thing We, we see that every single year with Baltimore Ravens We hear that every single year with the Baltimore Ravens We hear about some players Oh, this player's making plays in training camp Oh, this player looks good in training camp Then when it comes to the games, it's quiet You, you don't hear nothing but with these two, you've been hearing the stuff about them in training camp, and then you've been seeing it on the field, too, in the preseason games. So that's the type of combination that you want. Um, with Ardarius Washington, you ask what role would he have? What, what, what is he considered to be for the Baltimore Ravens? A player. Straight up. A player. A, a defensive back. You ain't even got to label him a cornerback. You ain't even got to label him a safety. Just label him a DB because he can do both. And since he can do both, this gives the Baltimore Ravens another roster spot because you ain't got to, all right, we're keeping this many corners. All right, Ardarius Washington, you're going with the corners. Okay, that takes away from a corner. Oh, we're keeping this many safeties. All right, Ardarius Washington, you're going with the safeties. Oh, that takes away from the safety. No, Ardarius Washington, you a DB. So you get two for one with him. So that makes the job a lot easier. Safeties. 
Another tough decision. We have three locks in Kyle, Marcus Williams, and Eddie Jackson. I like Sanusi Kane's Bernard Pollard-like play, but I'm sorry. Bo Braid been making plays each preseason game, and he's been available. Ooh, you are cutthroat. But they do always say, I like, like my guy from Extreme Sports Talk 305. My guy Beasy said, think like a GM. Think like a GM. Hey, you got to do it sometimes. But anyway, uh, he said, I'm rolling with five safeties, but... If we are battling between the two, I'm choosing Bo Braid over Sanusi Kane. But in this case, we are keeping both. Oh, okay. So you left out. Um, so you you eliminating Daryl Worley then. The veteran who could play safety. He could play some corner. And he play special teams. You taking him out over the seventh round pick and an undrafted rookie free agent at safety. That's this that's 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 bold. Especially because again. Ain't, not even because of me Think like the Baltimore Ravens do But um, anyway uh, as, as far as Sanusi Kane Yeah he He knocked himself out In that game When he knocked that play A <laughs> hard hitter um, But I, I get it He said if, if he ain't available Then he would move on So we'll see what happens with that Because um, I Has he been practicing? I'm not 100% sure I have not I don't recall seeing his name At practice Recently But I'm not 100% sure um, but anyway, he said bonus running backs. Ooh, all right, let's go. Cause this one, I feel like this one. I'm a right now. I will go Owen right. What I would much rather than you know what? Let's let's go to yours first. He said running back top two or no discussion. Expecting injury reserve for Keaton Mitchell. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, if I had to, well temporary injury reserve, not for the whole season, obviously. If I had to be honest, Owen Wright and Chris Colia looked good, even when the run game and offensive line looked like molded Swiss cheese. Granted, it's the preseason. I would like to see more Chris, uh, cause he Chris Colia. Colia, because he runs hard and can catch well. If he balls out against Green Bay, he may have a small shot. But Owen has looked the part and wouldn't be mad if he's RB3. All right, I, I was going to say I agree. I, I agree with that part, but I got another twist too. He said, Ali and Leary, uh, the Ravens love, but they aren't exactly ready if you get what I mean. I hate saying that about an athlete because they are, very, uh, they are the very few um, that get busy Behind that bust that behind to get there Oh yeah 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 they're the top 1% man You know so many people they spend their whole Lives working to get to the NFL And a lot most Don't make it but these guys Did I, out of so many Prospects out of so many draft picks that They made it so that that's very um, That's something serious right there uh, So gotta give them their credit um, As far as Ali Yeah I don't think the Ravens are gonna go with Ali for RB3 right now I do think Owen Wright Would have the edge on him um, I could see them stashing Ali, keeping on right. But what I would love them to do, they would have to get out of their old ways, though. Well, it ain't playoff time, so I guess we really wouldn't really have to worry about it till then. But um, if they brought Dalvin Cook back, brought Dalvin Cook back because he's available. Um, what you could do, you could sign him after Week One, uh, because after Week One, his salary wouldn't be guaranteed, and I know the Ravens would love that because they would get him for cheap, and it wouldn't be guaranteed too. Oh, boy, they'd be all over that. But Dalvin Cook, um, they could have Derrick Henry, and you could have Dalvin Cook, and you could, you could have them hold it down. And then you, you still got Justice Hill, too. So you got three guys with experience that all got plenty left in the tank. Plenty. That could make Derrick Henry's job easier. That could make Justice Hill's job easier. That could make Todd Monk and Lamar Jackson and John Harbaugh's job easier. Because you got somebody that already has been in the NFL, got plenty of experience, but also does have some experience in your current offense. He has experience in your offense. So that could go such a long way, make the transition easier for him. And it, um, the, the transition would only be from free agency to being on the Ravens again in the same offense again. So... That's what I would rather them. I would I would love if they did that. But if I'm Dalvin Cook, do I want to go there? Am I a placeholder until Keaton Mitchell gets back? Are you actually going to give me an opportunity? Are you actually going to let me do my thing? So that's a question that he could ask himself. And if he would be willing, well, the Baltimore Ravens, they would have to be willing in the first place. But with Dalvin Cook, that would be something that he would have to think about. Am I willing to go to the Baltimore Ravens? If they want me, of course. But am I willing to go to the Baltimore Ravens uh, and risk that Now it, it would be a, an, A better opportunity than what he's getting now Because he's a free agent So he would be on a team He would be on a roster So it, it would just be something to consider 
Uh, he said, I know the Ravens keep their guys they spend on and their draft picks, but you have to ask, what is going to make me better? I absolutely love that. I, I love that. And that's real. That's real and that's honest. That's straightforward. No beating around the bush. What will make me better? And you have to be willing to admit when you got stuff wrong. You have to. Because there may be a draft pick. Oh, yeah, this guy's going to do this. I can envision him doing that for the team. Oh, yeah, he's going to fit in well here. Oh, th this is what his role is going to be. Doesn't always work out. And that's okay. That's why it's the draft. They always call it a gamble. Because you, you never know what you're going to get. But you try. And you make the attempts, which is good. But sometimes some stuff just, sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, so I agree with that. He said, man. Tuesday is going to be insane for cut down day. I'd also like to throw out a scenario as well. Uh oh, he ain't done. He said, inner division trades are really rare, but how would you feel about Amari Cooper in purple? <laughs> you think I'm going to be mad at that? Oh, yeah, I would love that. And he, he, from, he from Florida. He from South Florida, too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It ain't happening, but yeah. I, yeah, I would love that. Uh, he said, um, he's been going real cheap from the Raiders. And the Cowboys. Yeah, he's been, he been moving. They've been getting for like, what, fifth round picks, fourth round, something crazy like that. Basically nothing. But he is a productive player. He's a good player. He still got it. Like when when the whole thing about Brandon Ayuk to the Browns, when that started, I'm like, what? Like it, and they were saying that Brandon, if the Browns would have traded for Brandon Ayuk, then they would have traded Amari Cooper to the 49ers. I'm like, why not keep both? But I know he's going through that whole little contract thing with them. And he wanted a new contract. They want to give him a new contract. They gave him a raise on his current. I think he on the last year of his deal, I think. But they gave him a raise on this year, but <laughs> they didn't give him a brand new contract. So I guess that's why they would have traded him. Or Yeah, I think they gave him like the ability to earn more in incentives or something like that. But um, yeah, so we'll see but uh, yeah i would love that but you know it ain't going down he said he's a real productive vet i wouldn't mind it what wide receiver would you go get sorry i'm grabbing for the lengthy breakdown uh you your family and team keep it clean have a blessed one you ain't gotta apologize for that. this was fun this, this was this was fun it, it was long but this this was fun I, I appreciate this a lot so thank you uh to my guy mark um what wide receiver would i get <laughs> oh you, you asking me i'm getting cd <laughs> i 